Okay, so this is a quick tutorial on how to format your APA paper in Microsoft Office's Word 365 or whatever they're calling it today. Um, anyway, um, and this is the seventh edition, and the nice thing about APA seventh edition is they did make the format easier. So let's take a look at it. Um, your title page will have um, a number of things on it, and I'll put a link to this guide in the um, description, but it will have um, of course, the title of the paper, the author, authors, affiliation, so that would be your college, university, course name and number, and you use the abbreviation as your college does. Um, so, you know, whether they do three or four letters, spacing, whatever that is, use their format. The instructor name, so doctor, professor, um, and make sure and double check spelling. Um, assignment due date and spell out that month, that's important. And then your header is simply going to be a header with a page number. And so here's what it looks like. It's just very, very simple and straightforward. Do notice the paper titles in bold, and that'll happen on the second page. So let's give it a try. Um, I'm opening Word here in a blank document. And you can notice it did have an APA-style paper, but this template is for... Um, um, the old style and that's not even right okay so um, you can use templates you can have your little brother or sister wash the dishes when your mom tells you to when mom comes in if they don't do it right she's gonna say and tell them to I told you to you know you can have so you can contract out the work but you got to make sure that the contractor did it right so like here this has got some problems with it and that's sixth edition so if your teacher is asking for sixth edition you're going to find a lot of those templates there and i have the instruction at the end i move it into an appendix at the end in writing on the basics a number of things but you know um we're is notorious for like making sure there's one or two things wrong. I don't know if they make sure, but it's there. So um, I highly advise you just don't even use it. It puts formatting in the way. They think they know what you want, and it, that makes me crazy. Okay, so for the first thing, um, I'm going to insert the um, page number. So I can just click on the Insert tab and then Page Numbers, and... Just the simple one, just right there like that. Uh, we'll add the page number. I'm going to highlight this and make sure, see, look, when I highlighted it, I got the pop-up. It says it's in 11-point font. I want to make sure that's in 12, okay? And then, of course, if it's, if I change my um, font in my paper, I want to make sure, so again, I highlight it. I'm right-clicking, um, and I want to make sure that is 12. If I change my font in my paper, I want to make sure that matches. So make sure those are the same, right? You can just leave it. Um, APA used to say Times New Roman, but now it just says a standard font. So if you just leave that, then you're good to go, okay? So they'll put in the page number for us, okay? Just do it. I'm like, I'm all... Oh, yeah, there it is. Okay, all right. Um, it's probably because I don't have it view whatever. I don't use the online version that often. Okay. All right. So let's go back here. The next thing we need, so when we look at this list of things, we're going to have the title in bold and then skip down. This is you enter a couple of times here and then you're going to, because this is going to be in the top third of your paper, enter twice. We want to make sure this is um, in um, Double spaced, so references, layout, um, spacing before, after, zero, spacing after, zero, make sure that that says zero, zero, um, and then spacing, paragraph options, let me just open this, um, general alignment, line spacing should be double, not multiple, zero, zero, and then double, that's what you want it to look like, okay? So here we go. I'm going to enter, enter, and then control B and control E. That was my center and my bold and great title. <coughs> Excuse me, I'm sorry, and great super subtitle. You do not have to have a subtitle with your title, 
but often academic papers will have that. And again, notice that this, so I'm going to do Control A so it highlights everything, is an 11. So I'm going to set that to 12. Okay? And then after this, I'm going to enter once and then twice, and that's it. I'm going to make sure I'm not typing in bold anymore, so I'm turning my bold off. I just press Control B to toggle it on and off. And the next thing that's going to happen here is going to be your name, the name of the uh, department or discipline in school, and then the title of the course. So, great student, type your name. At El Paso Community College, we call it like the English discipline, the history discipline. So, English discipline, and a comma, El Paso Community College. Oh, come on, fix those things. Um, yeah. Really? Really? Wow. <coughs> And then after that, we're going to have, what are we going to have next? Oh, I'm sorry, I went to the wrong one. Um, the course that it's in, instructor and the date. Course, instructor, date. So, English 1301 or 2 or well, whatever you're in. Composition 2, if we're doing 1302, Composition 1 for 1301. Um, if you're not sure, then go to, um, you can go to My EPCC, and when you go to My EPCC um, on the uh, main page, you can click on Services, and then down at the bottom, on the right-hand side, uh, there's Service uh, Syllabus Part 2, and that's where you would type in your uh, course and number, and then, of course, It'll give you your official syllabus, and you can see the title there. And of course, your teacher should have supplied that to you as well, so you can look at that version. And that's the, or the one that he or she gave you should also be with the policies where you would find the teacher's um, name. So we're going to put in the title of the course and then the teacher's name. Now make sure and look up that name. So either doctor or professor, depending on the person's degree, preference, whatever. Um, professor Wood, and you'll see that on most of my documents I put my middle initial, so do it like I did. Um, really check people's names. We all notice when our names are spelled wrong, and you don't want the first thing that your teacher reads to be like misspelling their name. I had a teacher who I had to pull out syllabus all the time. I could never get his name spelled right. So, I mean, I would do that because I wanted that right. So, Double check that, okay, and that's on your syllabus, your instructor policies again. And then we have the date, which is August oh, 17, how much? 2020. Um, the year of amazing surprise. So this is what um, your paper will look like. In general, you'll see that header up there. We should see it when um, we print. So let's see, print. Yeah, I want to print this document. Let's see if we do a PDF print. I just want to make sure it's showing up because I never really trust. I never trust it till I see it. Um, okay, so see there you can see there's the page number and there's the title. So you can see it's up here like that. All right. Um, all right, then there's a couple more things to do. So that's great. That gives us page one. There's your title page. You're, of course, going to have to write something. So I just pressed Control Enter, and that put in an automatic page break. And I just put in the title there, and then here we're going to go back to um, the left indent. I am so not familiar with um, this word. Okay. And we're going to make sure in tab to start our paragraphs. And then you write your great paper, right? You get your great ideas down, this and that, and everything like that. And you may be going along and writing your great paper, and, and it could be that you have to use some sources. So obviously, whenever you use sources, you say, well, I need to make sure. Uh-oh. 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 Whenever you use sources, you say, wow, I need to make sure and um, cite those sources. 
So of course you're going to need a references page. Control Enter again, boom, gives me references. Now notice this. Let me click on the view and see if it'll show me the um, ruler, navigation, header, footer, immersive, reading view. Oh, okay, that's how I can get back there. Uh, okay, so see, I put the, um, you know, um, spaces in there, so that gave us that. So what you want is you want that third page, and that's where, again, I just pressed, um, um, Oh, right here. Cool. Yes, that's what I want to do. I just pressed Control Enter, and that allowed me to um, get this new new page. <sighs> okay. Um, but whenever I'm working on something, what I oh, what I wanted you to notice was, and I don't know if you can see this, but this has actually got a tab in it because, and so if I center right now, it would actually not be centered. So backspace to make sure you're even with the margin that you're not tabbed. And then I'll go ahead and, and do my center, control E, and references. And then I'm going to put my references in, and that's where, control L for left, that's where whenever I have, um, you know, sources, I'll go in and cite them, look up how to cite them. I don't try to memorize that. I'm typing, I'm writing along, and I'm like, oh, wait, let me add another source in here. I can come in here and do that. Notice these are already formatted as hanging and dense just because I didn't enter. See, if I, if wherever I enter, then it's starting a new one. I mean, or it's, it's starting a new one. This is not a hanging and dense. It looks like the opposite. So what I need to do here is I need to go to home, make this a little bigger here, and then lay out new. This is why I do this because this is weird. I don't quite understand why they choose to do it. I'm going to try Control T. Nope. See, that's just gave me a new tab. Um, I don't quite understand why indent left and get right spacing before spacing after. More options, paragraph options, indentation, special hanging. Okay. See how that scooted those over? Wait, this one? There we go. Okay. Um, that's called a hanging indent, and for every source, it should have that. So every page you write, paper you write in APA will have at least two pages. It'll have your title page, and then, of course, your writing. Often, you will be citing sources, and you'll have that third page of references, and, of course, more in the middle if it's long. So, you know, what I often do is I'll set up the title page, and then the essay page and go ahead and press control enter, put in that references page. Then once I start working on it, I can, as I go along and I'm like, oh, I use this source, boom, I can go in and put that citation in right then. Even if I don't do the citation exactly, I can do the basics of where I found it so I don't forget later because that will lead to somebody saying you plagiarized, which has big, huge, dire consequences. So, um, you know, going ahead and doing that's important. Also remember that, you know, when it's page length, the references in the title page do not count toward that. Now, the good news is, is you know, is the bad news is those don't count towards your page length. The good news is think about page length as depth of thought. If somebody says write one page, you're like, oh, one page, double spaced. Okay, I'll give it a little thought. If they say write two or three, you give it a little more. If you're writing five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, one, usually you're using sources, so you don't have to come up with all the words. Um, but it's also a compliment to say, look, think deeply about it and think about what other people have said as well and tell me what you have to say about it. So keep those things in mind. So this isn't the best straightforward tutorial, but you get to see that, you know, just like anybody else, we all have to search around. And if there were things I couldn't have found, I would have paused it and asked Google, how do I do this in this way? Yeah. So that's the whole strategy. So let's take a look again here. Um, I want to look at the reading view so that you'll be able to see it um, as a whole paper. Patient. There we go. Yeah, it's a bit smaller. Okay, so there's page one. We've got those page, those title, the header with the number, title, student, that kind of thing. Here's the essay, however many pages you need to have in there. And there's that references page. And notice 
no extra space between those paragraphs. All the paragraphs exactly the same. The font is the same in everything. And you know what? Those nursing teachers can tell that that one number up there is a different font from the rest of the paper. I can tell. It's my business. It's what I do. How did your teachers get where they are? They wrote a ton of papers. They weren't excited about having to write them all, even your English teachers. Okay? Um, so we all know the tricks, too. Um, so don't do it, because it's really insulting. Um, do it right. Come correct, and you'll look better. So even if your paper's a little shorter, it's better to come correct and respectful, and you gain that kind of, um, you know, respectability than to try to do, you know, fudging or margins and stuff like that. So anyway, there you go. There's the basics of APA's seventh edition. If you're asked to do the sixth, that's the old one. There's another video on um, my um, YouTube channel that has that, other places. Um, the end of my writing down the basics, I just threw all the old stuff in an appendix. So if your teacher is still um, back in 2019, you know, way back in the past, um, and living in that world, then and they want you to do the sixth edition, then do that format. So, all right, um, that's really all I got. So let me know if you have questions. I might could help you, or I would just Google it. So um, Google it yourself. Ask me. We'll figure it out. And in the meantime, happy formatting.